Hey guys, Tom here again from SynthHacker.com and welcome back to another tutorial for Native Instruments Massive. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at making this Tyco or Bods of Canada style electronica slash like chill wave uh, lead sound. Really, really nice sound, um, and personally I'm a big fan of both Tyco and also uh, Boards of Canada uh, type stuff. Um, I will say straight away that um, this sound obviously has no external processing outside of Massive, but um, as far as I'm aware, especially Boards of Canada do a lot of processing to their sounds, including using a lot of like outboard gear, um, starting with like an analog synth, um, and then using like a lot of saturation, and also um, from what I've read as well, Boards of Canada uh, like to record stuff to tape and then like proper fuck with it and then re-record it and resample it and stuff um, So we are a little bit limited in that sense that we're just using massive but what I would advise doing after creating the sound with Massive is then go on to use something like um, saturation or uh, ta analog tape emulation plugins. There's loads out there. There's, some of them are, are free as well. And also have a, a Google for uh, free uh, VST plugins um, that uh, basically emulate Wow and Flutter, um, which is another kind of like uh, common common feature that that kind of gives it, the sound a lot of its characteristic but um even without all that stuff this is a really nice sound uh, on its own um i'll stop blabbering on now and uh, i'll actually get into uh, making it it's a really really cool sound and a lot to kind of talk about and, and go through um so just to begin with we're just going to completely initialize the patch and we're going to make this sound completely from scratch um as always guys before i get into making the sound i'll mention that i have a website which is synthhacker.com if you guys want to go grab yourself some presets for or massive and also other synths definitely go ahead and check that out it really helps support me uh, and you'll get your hands on some really cool uh, presets all handcrafted uh, by me as well so definitely go check that out uh, either click the link in the description below or go ahead and check out synthhacker.com but without further ado let's begin making this really cool um, chill wave electronica sound so we're going to make sure that the sound first of all is polyphonic um, this is kind of optional uh, the actual lead uh, that I was taking inspiration from was the track A Walk by Tycho um, and that's actually monophonic because you can hear like a bit of portamento between uh, notes like a bit of glide um, but I would kind of wanted to leave this open because this sound actually sounds really nice when you play it polyphonic with chords as well rather than just like one note um, so that's kind of like up to you um, we're going to make sure that the voicing is set to four voices and then we're going to set max voices to um, whatever, just 64 or something like that. You might want to lower this if your CPU isn't that powerful. Um, otherwise, you might start hearing like clipping, um, not clipping, but like distortion from uh, your CPU being overloaded or whatever. Um, so make sure that unison set to four. We're going to make sure that these voice four voices of unison are spread slightly apart. Um, this will kind of detune uh, the the whatever the out uh, the voices that the oscillators are outputting. Um, the reason you don't want this to detune though, don't move, move the slider too much, is because we're going to be using an LFO to detune the pitch of oscillator one and two, which really gives it a lot of its characteristics. Um, and then if you're using that kind of detune and also a lot of detune in the unison, it's going to sound a bit too much. So uh, just bear that in mind. Um, I don't think there's really anything to cover in the oscillator tab. Um, you could, if you wanted to, just to add a little bit more detune, um, just add a little bit of a really slow rate and a really slow depth of vibrato. This essentially is just going to be a really slow uh, moving, like master pitch change, which could give also give that like detune effect. And that's something that I did on on the sound at the beginning. Um, so this is a two oscillator sound. We're using really basic waveforms for this. We are emulating the um, Boards of Canada and Tyco style, um, which typically I'm assuming would be using analog gear. I'm not so much about sure about Tyco, but Boards of Canada for sure will be using analog gear with quite basic um, waveforms. We're actually going to use the sine triangle wavetable uh, for both of these oscillators, and we're going to keep these both uh, as triangle waves. 
Um, you can kind of blend between sine and triangle uh, when you're actually making the sound for yourself because you might think it sounds better as a sine wave than it does a triangle. It's completely up to you, really. Um, and then make sure that oscillator 2 is 12 semitones above oscillator 1. And we want to make sure that both these oscillators are being routed through filter 1 because we're just using uh, one filter for the sound. The next thing we're going to do is up a really slow... Uh, LFO, we're going to move the X fade curve all the way to the top and change this to a triangle so we've just got a really kind of consistent um, saw ramp up slash triangle uh, LFO and this is going to be what is modulating the pitch of oscillator 1 and it's going to kind of emulate the the uh, detune that you would, or the kind of drift of, of tuning that you would get uh, from an actual analog synth, which is really, really cool and something that I like to do on, on a lot of sounds. Uh, we don't want this to be too extreme, something around anywhere between 10 and 14, something like that, or 10 and 15. When you start going above like 20, it kind of starts to become a little bit too much and it will start, the lead, although it might sound good on its own, when you then add other elements into the mix that are uh, fully in tune, it then starts to sound a little bit, a bit, a little bit strange. Um, we're going to turn down the amplitude of oscillator 2 just a little bit and I'll just show you what we've got so far. Um, I'll just turn the master down. <laughs> So, so far, not too much of a pleasant sound, but you can already hear the main kind of rich characteristics uh, of the sound that we're going to kind of chip away at with uh, filters and so on. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is go down to the noise oscillator. We're actually going to add um, some brown noise and we're going to make sure that this is being routed through filter 2. Um, this is actually going to be bypassing filter 1. We're not actually going to be putting a filter in filter 2. This is just to add like a little bit of, of texture to the sound, um, which you'll have heard at the, the demo at the beginning. Um, just again, just kind of emulating the kind of noise that you'd get uh, from like analog gear. You know, you want that kind of grittiness, that like dirtiness to the sound. Um, you don't want it to be sound like too clean. Um, but we're going to actually use a separate envelope for the amplitude of this noise oscillator um, just by dragging and dropping it here. Um, we want this to be um, quite a short decayed um, noise just at the beginning of the sound. We don't want it throughout the, the whole sound. Um, so moving on, let's go into our filter section. We're going to set up our low pass to pole filter um, and bring the cutoff all the way down. We're also going to bring the resonance down a little bit as well. Make sure that the volume is full. And then we're going to bring down this mix amount to around here. This is just so we're hearing both the, um, the oscillators which are being routed through filter 1 and also making sure that we can hear our brown noise which is bypassing the filter and going straight through filter 2 which is set to none. Also make sure that the uh, amplitude for this is turned up as well. And now you'll be able to hear both the oscillators and the noise. If I turn the cut off up. <laughs> So we've still got a little bit of work to do. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is actually add key tracking uh, to the, the filter cutoff. What's really cool about this and something that I'm sure Tycho definitely does on his leads is it means that depending on what note you play on your keyboard, if I just go into the tab here, um, the filter cutoff is going to open up. So higher notes, you'll hear more the higher frequencies, high, more high frequency content of the sound. And when you play lower notes, it'll sound a little bit more closed up and a little bit more muffled, which is a really, really cool effect. Um, really, really cool. It's kind of like automation, if you imagine it like that. Um, but automatically happening uh, within the synth itself. Really, really cool effect. And it, it means that the the kind of harmonic signature is going to be the same for, for each note, which is really cool. Um, the next thing we're going to do is set up another envelope here and drag and drop this onto the cutoff as well, which we're going to have basically just give it a little bit of attack um, and make sure it's got a little bit of sustain and a bit a little bit of decay. This kind of add like a bit of a pluck um, to the sound. And we're also going to set up a really similar envelope uh, for the amplitude, which by default is envelope uh, four within the synth and bring the sustain down a little bit and give it a little bit of release. Also need to give a little bit of release to envelope three and also envelope two, I forgot about that. And so now we have this. <laughs> So getting really, really close to the sound now, you can already hear it's got that kind of more like key sound and more like plucky sound, really, really cool. 
Um, so the next thing we're going to do, let's see here, is go down to our inserts. We're going to switch both insert 1 and 2 on and just make sure they're set up correctly in the routing tab. So insert uh, insert 1, uh, we, we've got straight after the filter, but we're going to change insert 2 so that it's right at the end of the signal chain just before the effects. Um, the reason for this is we're actually going to use insert 2 as a filter. If you just turn the low pass all the way up and bring the high pass down a little bit, what this is essentially going to do is filter out a lot of the low frequency mud from the sound um, and clean it up a little bit. <laughs> So if we bring this all the way down here, you can hear it's kind of got this like muddy low end that we don't really want in a lead sound. And this is really helpful as well because we are going to be using a lot of reverb on this sound. So just cutting out a lot of the low frequencies in the sound before it's then rooted through the reverb and the effects is a great way to make sure that the sound isn't adding any muddiness to the mix. Because sending low frequencies um, through a reverb can really, really uh, affect your mix in a really bad way. Um, the next thing we're going to do, and it's going to add a lot of a lot of characteristics to the sound, is actually add a sign shaper, which is just a form of distortion. We're going to bring the dry wet down a little bit and the drive a little bit and you'll hear the effect that this has nice little bit of crunchiness to the sound this adds a uh, adds like a little bit of character really really nice I, I thought it sounded really really cool um the next thing we're going to do is set up our effects so we're actually going to set up a delay a sync delay and also a reverb um, I'll just turn the reverb off for, for now though. We're going to leave this as it is at one for setting. Uh, bring the feedback down a little bit because we don't want it be, to be too extreme. Increase the dampness a little bit and bring down the dry wet. And this is just going to have a delay before it's then being rooted through the reverb. And it really creates this really kind of like spacey atmospheric sound which we obviously want from a electronic or like chill wave uh, lead. <laughs> You can kind of play around with the feedback and the the dry wet of these effects um, to kind of like find out what it is that you you like prefer. Um, but um, yeah, just play around with that until you figure out what it is that you those the settings that you actually prefer. Um, and then we're going to set up a reverb here. We're going to turn the color up and the density up increase the size a little bit and take the dry wet down and this really is is going to polish off the sound nicely and really add a lot of atmospheric uh, content to the sound <laughs> I mean, it's just absolutely amazing sound. And a lot of people don't realize that you can get these really nice, almost analog, really textured, really nice characteristic sounds out of Massive. You know, a lot of people think about Massive as just this, you know, dubstep machine or whatever, or like aggressive sounding thing, but you can get some really, really beautiful sounds out of it. Um, really, really underrated synth for, for this kind of uh, this kind of genre. Um, so really, really cool stuff. Hopefully you got a lot of use out of this video. Um, I really like this sound. I'm a big fan of like Tycho and Boz Canada and stuff. And hopefully, um, you know, you learned a, a thing or two. Um, even just some little tricks that you can implement in other sounds um, that you create with Massive as well. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel um, and leave a like if the video was helpful to you so you can stay up to date with uh, new videos as well. Um, and if you haven't already, go ahead and check out synthhacker.com uh, where you can see all the presets that I have available for sale uh, for Massive and other synths as well. Um, and yeah, any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave comments down below. I just want to say thanks again for all the support and um, plenty more content uh, for, uh, coming f for you, uh, coming your way. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.